Welcome back to Discrete Mathematics. Today we're going to look at partial fraction decomposition. This is going to be a bigger, bigger topic when we get to recurrence relations and how we can solve those with generating functions. So you need to know how to do this now so that way you have enough practice that when you get to that topic you're totally okay with it. So here's the question. How can we find the coefficient of x to the 8 of 3 plus x over 1 minus x times 1 minus 2x? Well, clearly we want, or we see two different generating functions there, but we also have this fraction on top, or not a fraction, but this variable on top, 3 plus x, that's a little bit harder to deal with. So we want to split it up into pieces that look like 1 over 1 minus ax to the n. Well, really this 1 can be any coefficient we want, so we can put this a0 or capital A, capital B, so I'm going to show you how to split this up. So here's our example, 3 plus x over 1 minus x times 1 minus 2x. What we can do is we can say, okay, it's going to be some constant over 1 minus x plus another constant over 1 minus 2x. Since we had something become a common denominator, so when we take a times 1 minus 2x plus b times 1 minus x, we get the common denominator of 1 minus x times 1 minus 2x. So we're just decomposing it. So what we can do here is we can say, okay, well, we have a times 1 minus 2x, so we're going to try to compose it back. We're going to try to get the common denominator and see what our a and b are. So this is going to be a times 1 minus 2x plus b times 1 minus x. And for the sake of consistency, for the first example, I'm going to write out the whole thing. So now we have the common denominator, and we have 3 plus x over 1 minus x times 1 minus 2x. Um, at this point, I'm going to drop the denominator and just work with the top half. So we have 3 plus x is equal to a times 1 minus 2x plus b times 1 minus x. Okay, we're going to expand the right side. So this is a minus 2ax plus b minus bx, and this is equal to 3 plus x. We're going to group all of our x's together. So, well, we'll do the coefficients first. So we have a plus b, and then we're going to add, okay, we have negative 2ax, and then we have a negative b. So we have 3 plus x is equal to a plus b plus negative 2a minus b times x. So I just grouped all of our like variables together. And now we know a couple things here. We know that a plus b has to be equal to 3, because a plus b is the constant on the right, and 3 is the constant on the left. We also know that negative 2a minus b has to be equal to 1, because the coefficient of the x is 1, so negative 2a minus b must also be 1. So using whatever method you like to solve it, you can use a matrix if you want, or you can just add this up here. We're going to solve for a. So we have 3 equals a plus b, 1 equals negative 2a minus b. We can just add the equations together, and we're going to get 4 is equal to negative a. And of course, the b's cancel out. That's what we want. So we have a is equal to negative 4. So now we can figure out b. We can just plug it back in. So we have 3 is equal to negative 4 plus b. So b must be equal to 7. So now that we have a is equal to negative 4, b is equal to 7. We can now substitute in the original equation. So let's make a replacement here. a is negative 4, and b is 7. So we've now decomposed our partial fractions. Now what we can do to make sure we got the right answer is we can multiply them out and make sure we get the correct denominator. So, we'll get negative 4 
times 1 minus 2x plus 7 times 1 minus x all over 1 minus x times 1 minus 2x. Let's expand the top. We need to make sure this gets to 3 plus x. So we're going to get negative 4 plus 8x plus 7 minus 7x. And we can see this is the same thing as 3 plus x. So we did it right. And that's a good way you can check. So on an exam, if you have extra time, definitely check to make sure you're right, because that's going to save you a lot of marks. Let's do a form practice question. Since what you're probably saying is, OK, I understand that you split up into a over 1 minus x plus b over 1 minus 2x. But what happens when things get a little bit trickier with more than 2? So what we have here is three different denominators. So we have 1 minus 2x, 1 minus 3x squared, and 1 plus x. So we have a over 1 minus 2x. OK, then we have, well, let's do the last one first. We're going to have b over 1 plus x. But what do we do about this 1 minus 3x squared? Well, if we have c, which is 1 minus 3x to the 1, because we could have a denominator with 1 minus 3x on its own. And another one could be 1 minus 3x all squared. So we're going to have four terms here. So we need to solve a plus b plus c plus d all over their respective powers. So for instance, if we had some constant a0 or a6 over 1 minus 4x to the 4, then what we have to do is we have to do it for every single power. So we have a over 1 minus 4x plus b over 1 minus 4x all squared plus c minus or c over 1 minus 4x all cubed plus d over 1 minus 4x to the 4. So we're just doing all possible combinations that you could get up to that denominator. So it might seem a little bit weird that we're doing it like that. But again, we have to cover all possible scenarios. It might just happen that say this c over 1 minus 3x is a 0. And then you just wouldn't include it in your answer. And that's perfectly OK. That could happen. But the form is also important. So let's do one practice here. We want the sixth coefficient of 13 minus 14x over 1 minus 2x times 1 plus x. So let's split this up into a over 1 minus 2x plus b over 1 plus x. We're now going to multiply. So we want to get a common denominator. So we're going to get a times 1 plus x plus b times 1 minus 2x. I'm just going to leave the denominator out because it's a little bit faster and not as messy. So we have 13 minus 14x is equal to a times 1 plus x plus b times 1 minus 2x. So I'm going to expand this out. Again, you don't have to expand this part out. But for the sake of writing this, I'll expand it out. And then I'll group like terms. Of course, you can group them all in one step if you'd like. So this is a minus 2b times x. So we know that 13 has to equal a plus b and negative 14 has to equal a minus 2b. So what we'll do is we're going to subtract this bottom equation. So that way we can eliminate the a's. So we're going to get 27 is equal to 3b. So we know that b is going to equal 9, which means that a must equal 4. Again, I'm just plugging 9 into this b here and then solving for a. So what we get is What's the original equation here? That's 4 over 1 minus 2x plus 9 over 1 plus x. OK, and we want x6 of this. 
So what we'll do is we'll say, okay, well, this is really just taking the six coefficient of four over one minus two X, and then we add the sixth coefficient of nine over one plus X. Well, this is really the same as saying, okay, I want four times the coefficient of one over one minus two X plus nine times the sixth coefficient of one over one plus X. So we know this is four times two to the six plus nine times one negative one to the six. So this is going to be four times 64 plus nine, which is some number like 263, something like that. I believe two to the six is 64. Let me do this quickly in my head. Yes, that is it. So this should be 263. So it's, it's a long involved question, I know. So it's very important you don't screw up because if you screw this part up, then you're guaranteed to screw this last part up and that's not good. So if you can avoid it, try and, you know, check your work, go backwards, see if you get the same result. So why do you need this? Well, you need it for recurrence relations. Eventually we're going to solve those with generating functions. In fact, I might even explain what a recurrence relation is first, because that would be helpful. But uh, you'll also use it for integration in calculus too, because it make things a lot easier. Um, when I say calculus too, I really just mean integral calculus, which is taught as calculus two in some universities and in others, it's just taught as part of calculus one. So that is partial fraction decomposition. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, share it with your friends if they have troubles, because sharing the knowledge is happiness. So hopefully that wasn't too bad, and I'll see you guys next time.